where most side quests consist of following NPCs and finding little girl's cats. Wait, what? A singular game series stands out shining above the rest. For this video, I'll be mostly focusing on Persona 3 and 5. I didn't get to playing 4 yet as my hack switch gets what I imagined to be the machine equivalent of Lysopedian when I try to install it. Yes, I just publicly admitted to video game piracy, come on Nintendo, my ass cheeks are right here. And since these games take longer than an average hamster to complete, and the fact that my lifespan will be further shortened by 15 years after editing this, I have opted to just making this video regardless. Now to catch you all up to speed, Persona is a JRPG spin-off of Shin Megami Tensei, although it greatly outperforms it. You play as a group of teenagers with what is essentially Jojo's Bizarre Adventure stands, but instead of silver chariots, you got somebody blurred out. Persona is a half-life simulator and half-dungeon crawler, and it's how the game links between these two aspects that is truly impressive. So please, let me cook so I can blow your mind. Figuratively, figuratively! According to Jungian psychology, I promise this is relevant, every person uh, has two sides. A persona, which is mask in Latin, persona, is the side a person wants to show others. This includes socially positive traits like kindness, humility, or charity. A shadow, however, is what a person hides from others and even from oneself. This includes socially negative traits like envy, pride, or greed. Jungian psychology states that a person cannot be complete without acknowledging and accepting their shadow. In Persona 5, when a character awakens the power known as a persona, their eyes turn yellow, which is a common depiction of a shadow in the series, which indicates they're in contact with their shadow self. <laughs> That's right! It was me, Perry. And the mask forms on their face which they have to painfully rip off with blood coming out as if it's a part of their body, which obviously symbolizes how their false identity became so engraved into them that it's practically a part of them now. Then finally they can summon their persona, which is often depicted as a historical, mythological or fictional character which resembles their respective user's personality. The point I'm trying to make is, the persona strength is obviously correlated to the personality strengths, and each person can only have one persona. The only exception to that rule are the protagonists. They are exactly Exactly the perfect stereotype of a silent self-insert protagonist, which for any of you unaware essentially means a character designed to be as unambiguous as possible with little to no personality so that the players can see themselves and interact with the game world through that character. But unlike your lack of personality, you disgusting prick, there serves a very important narrative purpose. You see, the protagonist possess what is known as a wild card, which allows them to wield multiple personas. So it's not that they have no personality, they're so bland that essentially every personality can fit them. The they can even wield the player's personality, which is why the immersion even works to begin with. This is all made abundantly clear in the lyrics of Persona 5's Beneath the Mask. Now this obviously refers to the protagonist Joker, but this line specifically is very interesting. Poe's Masquerade likely refers to the short story, The Mask of the Red Death. To sum it up quickly, a prince invites the elites of society to a masquerade ball as a distraction from a plague that's running rampant, with different colored rooms, each representing a different aspect of life. But the last one is the most interesting. A black and red room which resembles death itself and the inevitability of fate, as by the end of the story not even the wealthy elites could escape their inevitable doom. All of which are very prevalent themes in Persona. Wait a second, black and red? <laughs> Meanwhile, Persona 3's OST is a bit, um... It's interesting. Now, for all of you who were patient enough to stay through all of that, all whopping three of you, in all modern mainline Persona entries, you get around one year of in-game time to complete the game. Is that a threat? Getting one action per day and one action per night. There are three main activities you can do, each one forcing time to progress in-game. The first thing you can spend your time on is increasing your bond ranks. You see, for each main side character, dear god I'm a walking contradiction, is a side story consisting of 10 chapters that triggers when you hang out with that character. But you can't just go from rank to rank with every hangout, that'd be too easy. To reach the next rank story, you'd need to have enough bond points. You get those points by a few methods. First and foremost, picking the right dialogue choices that match that character's personality the most, which forces you to think and actually understand how these characters work, utilizing your own version of a wildcard to wield people's personalities. Or you could just look it up online. 
Now if only there was an IGN guide to real girls. If you hang out with them in one of their chapters and don't get enough bond points, you'll be forced to go on a generic hangout with them which has little to no dialogue and doesn't progress their story. And it still takes time off your day, meaning you'd need to waste more of your already limited time. Sometimes however the game would stop you from progressing a rank because of a certain social stat not being high enough. Which brings us to the next thing you can spend your time on. You can spend your time increasing your social stats, which are things like your character's guts, knowledge or kindness. You increase your stats by partaking in daily activities like studying to become smarter, playing baseball to become more proficient, or eating burgers to increase your courage. So that's why the average American doesn't fear anything, except maybe proper education and healthcare. Ooh, very scary. But what do we get from completing these bond ranks, I hear you asking through your screen, barely keeping your ass on your seat? Well, aside from experiencing the side story content, characters and by extension their personas all correlate to a specific arcana or a tarot card. I knew this was just Joseph's bizarre adventure. The higher your rank is with a character, the more XP you'll get from fusing personas with their same arcana. You also unlock new abilities, either for yourself or for your teammates. This could range from the ability to recover quickly from ailments to being able to swap out party members mid battle. And to top it all off, in Persona 5 and 4, every character with a Persona will evolve it into a new one when you reach rank 10 with them. Wait a second, didn't this guy say that everyone can only have one Persona? I knew he was talking out of his ass this whole time. Well wouldn't you focus a bit? That's the third butt joke I had to crack today. There are four now. Personas, much like people, can change and evolve. That doesn't mean someone can have two personalities. The last thing you can choose to spend your time on is combat. Persona is a turn-based game, and the resources to attack are your character's health for physical attacks and your character's SP for magical attacks. Those are replenished by either using items or leaving the dungeon and coming back another day. Usually the game gives you an objective to finish within a specific time limit. You're free to use as many days as you please, but obviously using less would be more favorable, because then you'd have more free days to spend progressing your bonds and social stats, and by extension gain even more abilities. It's the perfect reward for someone who is skilled enough to finish the dungeon in say, one day, but still not being too punishing and giving more casual players the room they need to breathe. And this whole system of using time efficiently not only teaches us to cherish and get the most out of our time, for our lives may not be as short as a year, but it is still limited all the same. But it also perfectly links between two gameplay aspects that feel completely unrelated. By increasing your bonds, you get more story content and you unlock more abilities for combat. With those abilities, you save your time even more with extra aid in completing your objectives, which you can then use to experience even more story content and unlocking more abilities. All while still making full narrative sense and making the most out of game design choices that would often just be disregarded as a necessary disadvantage with RPGs. This is how Persona perfects side quests. They make it the entire game. But enough of me just purely glazing this game serious. So join me next time where I will talk about how the gummy Luigi candy costs a great Chinese famine.